Hello and welcome. The market for Indian IT companies is looking promising, but there are also interesting challenges ahead. Like for instance, the ability to cater to and fashion the needs of the digital enterprise, as it's called, particularly in consumer-facing companies. Well, I'm joined by someone who's going to talk about that and also about what the Indian market holds ahead for 2014, Noshir Kaka, Managing Director of uh, McKinsey in India. Noshir, thank you very much for speaking with us. Thank you. So, uh, Noshir, let's, uh, you were talking you know, uh, the, about the top 10 technologies. Let's start from there and sort of slowly thread our way into what the domestic market looks like. Sure. So, Govan, this occurred, um, you know, the McKinsey has a global institute, a McKinsey Global Institute, yeah. which is our think tank. Mm. And late last year, they came up with a report globally that mm. said there are 12 disruptive technologies that is actually going to impact as much as 25% of global GDP. Mm -hmm. So, 25% of global GDP over the next 8 to 10 years is going to be seriously impacted by 12 technologies. Mm. Seeing that, I think NASCOM and the mm. folks in India basically came and said, look, it'll be wonderful to see if we can adopt it to India and we, we are in the process of doing that. Um, one of the things we've come up with is the 10 technologies mm. we feel that are actually going to dramatically transform India. I'll give you a couple of sense of what sure. that is. Um, one is obviously which is everyone, one everyone sees around us and one which is absolutely not that visible. Uh, one that everyone sees around is what we call ubiquitous connectivity. Mm. Um, the cost of broadband and the cost of access devices um, in this country over the next eight years is going to go down dramatically. Mm -hmm. right? Today, if you actually look at the cost of broadband, even reliability aside, mm -hmm. is actually very high in the country. Mm -hmm. And what we see over the next few years is that that coming through technology and other business model innovations coming increasingly lower, the cost of access devices going you know, sub-100 and lower, mm -hmm. uh, which is already there. And the combination of that actually puts access and technology in a cost structure that is just incredibly powerful. And as a result of that, 300 million plus Indians mm -hmm. are going to come onto the mobile internet, the largest migration of people onto the mobile internet. That's okay. a very positive phenomenon. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look at the other side, um, what we see globally is that through cognitive computing and automation, a, a large chunk of what we call knowledge work today can it's actually be automated, mm -hmm. right? And now that globally is a very big challenge. In India, it actually could be a good opportunity as well. So what you're saying is that it will disappear from elsewhere but appear here? Well, what will happen in India is now if you translate back into the domestic market, it take a subject like healthcare. You could take education, you could take financial inclusion, you could take anything. Uh, in the next eight years, we estimate that more than 500 million Indians will actually not have appropriate access to primary healthcare mm -hmm. if we continue to build out our physical dominated model. Mm -hmm. Now, what technology allows you to do is actually to take a semi-skilled person mm -hmm. and operate at a level that he or she could not have operated without technology, mm -hmm. right? So if you look at just probably 500 million Indians who are not going to have appropriate health care that you and I perhaps enjoy in the city of Mumbai, the fact is you could have, you know, a whole army of paratechnicians, paramedical uh, helpers who actually enable through technology mm -hmm. could actually provide that care which today's doctors and nurses perhaps are not willing to, okay. right? Or just could not have, we don't have the supply to actually fill that. So what you're seeing is entire cadres of people that are essentially digitally enabled, who can actually perform skills and services that their normal education would not have allowed them. And that's why we think that in India, technology done well could actually also be a tremendous job creator. And what, what's it going to take to get there or to get here? I think the interesting thing is a lot of folks talk about, uh, you know, the challenges that we will have given the environment, given what's going on in India. And I think those are all granted. And it's not an easy act, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't go there. But I would say there's a certain sense of inevitability mm. about this. Mm. Um, if you look at broadband access, you look at devices, you look at, uh, you know, digital, um, uh, you look at digital sort of platforms that allow authentication, you look at digital payments, all of these, you can argue about which technology and how quick the adoption curve will be, but essentially over a period of eight to 10 years, that's going to happen mm -hmm. in India, mm -hmm. right? So I think what you're really debating is what are the business models that are going to allow this to succeed? Mm -hmm. And I think India is full of vibrant entrepreneurs that is actually going to allow that. that, on that that's on the supply side. And on the demand side, what is increasingly obvious is that the citizen of India is actually becoming empowered by technology. Mm -hmm. And we think that that movement will actually create the demand stimulus which will actually propel this change.
Okay. And you said that this is going to impact the domestic market for IT companies as well. Right. It will actually impact not just the domestic market for IT companies, but it will Im impact domestic sectors. Okay. So your hospital of the future, your primary healthcare center yeah. of the future, the vocational training that we provide, the agriculture that you know, farmers currently do, the energy sources that we have, right? For example, we could see as much as 9% of India's demand coming from off-grid or on-grid mm. solar, mm. right? That would light up about 100 million in, you know, Indian homes. Um, and that's a huge amount. So that you're categorizing it as a di disruptive technology? That is one of the disruptive okay. technologies. It's one of the 10 disruptive technologies, mm. which is why we've gone beyond mm. what we traditionally call just the IT technologies. Okay. So wh what does this mean for, let's say, companies who are trying to grab a slice of this action? Or you're saying that it really there's no one company or one industry because everyone is affected and everyone can have a go? I think you will find that digital disruption will occur to many, many sectors, right? Mm. Almost all sectors. Mm. Um, and we think both social government, um, uh, you know, both at center and state will actually get affected. Uh, I think what is, and what's the good news of this is it, it, there, there is enough disruption both within existing companies and from attackers that is actually going to cause it. What do companies need to do? That's, that's <laughs> a big challenge. That's um, why they should come to McKinsey. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, I would say that, um, you know, in a recent discussion we had, um, uh, we were just uh, we were just outlining a few things, a few thoughts. One is um, there has to be a real conviction about this from the top. It doesn't happen if uh, the senior management of the company or any uh, the company can be a company, it can be a state government, it can be any any institution. Uh, you have to be aware and convinced personally that this disruption is not just another bubble that's going to burst. Mm. Uh, the second or thing, another IT transformation, or right? another yeah. IT uh, transformation that may or may not be successful, mm. right? I think you've got to feel that this is actually a new way of working that is inevitable, mm. right? I think that's one. I think that then, then, then the mechanics of what you do, how you create a team, how you go after it, whether you let somebody outside attack your business, you know, those can be worked out. But I think the core thing is because even when we go around and we look at the innovation that is happening in India, we are stunned. We're absolutely stunned by the amount of innovation that is going on in just about every sector. And I think it won't an, be an too long. An uh, example that you saw recently or something that interested you? Well, I mean, I, I think, you know, if you, look, if you just listen to the four panelists that were on the NASCOM stage, um, I mean, you know, what some of them are doing on financial inclusion is just incredible. It's just incredible that we would think that you have biometric authentication, you know, affecting, you know, seven, this one company is 70 cities, 2,500 crores of disbursement, um, you know, and it's going to change the shape of the country, right? Um, and so I think you see pockets of those innovations occurring on healthcare, on education, yeah. on agriculture, on energy, um, financial inclusion, just about every topic you look at. And what, what is this sort of, um, I mean, you normally also look at how things are going to be for the Indian IT industry, right? I, I'm not going to pin you down with that, but what's your general sense? So I think the, if you switch to the Indian IT industry, we've got two very interesting opportunities. It's, it's, not, it's hard to call an industry which has, you know, just come out and said we're going to grow at 13 to 15 percent, you know, next year. <laughs> you know, globally, if you look at many industries around the world, you know, they would pretty much salivate at a number like that. Right. Um, so I think there are two things on the global industry. One is I would say, even if you just look at our core markets, which is IT services and BPM, uh, and you look at just the outsourced share globally, hmm. the India-centric companies would have about 8 to 10% of the, in the global market share. Okay. Right? And to get to the next 100 billion, we probably need another 4 or 5%. Mm -hmm. right? So we are not talking about massive movements. You know, This is actually pretty much there and the penetration is actually still continues to be low. So I think the international opportunity is not going away, it's not becoming less. I think the impact for disruption in India is equally big, if not larger, right? Not just for the IT companies, but for the sectors as a whole. Right. And we think that that, comb that combination where if you go after your traditional markets, you go after emerging markets in India, right? With new technologies coming in, and new consumers to actually, which are digitally enabled, demanding a level of services that were not possible. Um, it's very hard to see an industry that has the kind of growth potential as this one does. So is it going to be a decade of di digital disruption ahead before which people should be gearing up and be prepared to for a long haul? Or is it going to be a year of digital disruption? Well, 
Uh, my submission to you, Govind, is you, we won't call it disruption anymore. Okay. <laughs> I think it's going to be a way of life. Right. And it's already upon us. You just have to look at your children to realize that. Yeah. Ashit, thank you very much for speaking with us. Thank you. You're welcome.